And welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. We've got Grand Canyon University softball for you here on this gorgeous Friday evening. It is the WAC opener for Ann Pearson's team. They are taking on Utah Valley. And we have a lot to get to here tonight. A terrific matchup, a starting conference play. Uh, Pearson entering her 16th season coaching the Lopes. And of course, the Lopes have had some pretty exciting moments this season, uh, defeating Florida State. Uh, that was a big one. And the record right now at 18 and 13, 14 and 6 at home, 3 and 2 away. The starting pitcher today is Ryan Denhart. She is currently uh, the WAC pitcher of the week it's actually been uh interesting for grand canyon two players in that category shay smith also a player of the week for grand canyon so we are about to get underway here and uh, starting lineups they just went through it obviously now utah valley is a team that currently leads the WAC in batting average at 321 and that is uh, far and away uh, better than anyone else in the conference at this moment. Jody Jackson here with you and glad to be with you here uh, along with the crew here at Grand Canyon, a wonderful group of students working hard. And here's a look at the starting lineup right now. Skylar Cook in center, Abby Dowdy in right field, a Lindsay Steverson at second base, Brianna Moeller who leads the team in average for Utah Valley in the infield. And uh, we'll get started here right now. Utah Valley State, Skylar Cook to lead things off. And showing bunt, that's gonna go foul. Skylar Cook here, a senior, 311 and 19 games played. Denhart, and that pitch is up and outside. Ryan Denhart from Los Alamitos, California, transferring in from Maryland. One, one. That pitch is a strike, it's in there down the middle. Two to the count now. Denhart, a sophomore. And Cook here, the leadoff hitter. She is from South Jordan, Utah. Showing bunt. And that's a ball. Three two count on the leadoff hitter for Utah Valley. I mentioned that they have the highest batting average in the conference at 321, but the Lopes have actually scored more runs. All right, Cook gets that one in play, but that is uh, over to the third baseman, Sierra Smith. Easy play there for the first out of this game. Now it's Abby Dowdy. She is the right fielder from Vail, Arizona. Just a freshman. And that goes foul. Dowdy batting 379. The 0 1 pitch from Denhart is a low, bounces. The catcher, Kelly Dietrich, keeping it in front of her. Yeah. 
And the 1-1 one -one offering to Abby Dowdy. And showing Bunt going foul once again. And talking to Ann Pearson, loves this group of young ladies. Work hard, uh, a lot of leaders in this group. They, she loves the character and the integrity of the team. Also, uh, the way that they work at the academic side as well. And the goal for them in their six, second year, it's the sixth year of D1 play, uh, and that's gonna be a ball. Second year eligible to go to the College World Series if they would make it to that point. Of course, that's the goal. Um, and it's still young in the process, just the second year. So um, high hopes, though, to see how far they can go. And that ball is back and foul for Dowdy. Denhart struck out 14 batters against North Dakota to set a new GCUD1 record. So you know what she's capable of. That is foul and hits Dowdy in the foot. One out, 2-2 two -two count here. And that is outside, gonna be a full count here to Dowdy. <laughs> Another offering goes foul. I mentioned Ann Pearson's 16th season. She's just 32 wins away from win number 500. She's had a lot of success here over the years, a career a winning percentage of 566. She was a shortstop at Arizona State. All right, here we go again, 3-2 count, one out. Denhart looking to get the second out against right fielder Abby Dowdy. And the swing and the miss. Strikeout for Denhart. And the second out of the inning. A lot of pitching on this team. Uh, Pearson likes to say she doesn't have a one and a two. It's really four pitchers uh, that can carry the load as far as starting games and logging innings. And Denhart is certainly a big part of that. Now we've got Lindsay Steverson. And that's a strike in there and uh, she is leading their team in batting average second actually in the WAC 418 batting average Shea Smith is third in that category and Steverson she also has a little bit of power she leads the team in homers with five this season that ball high And the 1-1 one, one off speed in there for a strike. Nice pitch. And throwing Steverson off a little bit. And Denhart transferring from Maryland. And she struck out the most opposing hitters as a freshman for the Terrapins since 2006. She's got that ability. And this is a good matchup. Steverson leads the Wolverines in multiple batting categories. That's going to be high for a 2-2 count. Last time these two teams met, uh, well, they won the final meeting in the WAC tournament. The Lopes beat the Wolverines 18 to seven. The 2-2 two -two pitch fouled back. And Steverson ranks 21st in the country in RBIs per game. Eight of the players on this Utah Valley Wolverines team are hitting above 300 on the season. So they definitely have some hitters. <laughs> Denhart, the 2-2. And that is up for a 3-2 count as she 
tries to get this final out of the first inning in the WAC opener here at GCU. This gorgeous softball stadium, beautiful facilities here at Grand Canyon University. And that is going to be playable in the infield and an easy out for the first baseman, Taylor Olson. And that ends the first inning here at GCU. Nicely done. A quick one, two, three for Ryan Denhart on the mound here today. And we're happy to bring it to you here on GCU TV. We want to tell you a little bit about getting the best gear to show off your Lope pride. Go to lopeshops.gcu.edu to find everything GCU from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use the promo code GCUTV2525 to get 25% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Let's paint the valley purple. Lopes up. Now, I did some sideline reporting on the Wichita State um, Lopes baseball game, the season opener, and uh, got a little bit of Lopes gear myself, so I'm all set. <laughs> got some cool purple sunglasses that my da daughter loves to wear. Got a really cool t-shirt as well. So all about paint in the valley purple. And yeah, President Brian Mueller uh, leading the way academically and then athletically with these great facilities. We've seen GCU just climbing as far as when you talk about college athletics and what they've been able to do and the successes they've had. So in Utah Valley now, we're going to focus on their pitcher is Devin Kretz. And leading off for GCU is going to be the right fielder, Lorian Olson. And Devin Kretz comes in with a record of 5-5, five and five, a 5.44 ERA on the season. The first pitch is outside, that's ball one. And that is in there for the strike. And a one-two count now. <laughs> Olsen behind in the count here against Kretz. And a little high and outside, two-two count. <laughs> Lorianne Olsen, second base from Tucson, Arizona. And she chops that one foul. Olsen is a junior. And the 2-2 from Kretz. Again, a foul ball right there. That ball in the air, but again, foul. Nice at bat here, keeping the at bat going from Olsen with two strikes. And the 2-2, two -two, and that is outside for ball three. So a full count here. Devin Kretz, a junior from Corona, California, on the mound here today for the Wolverines. The 3-2. And again, fell back by Lorian Olson. The head coach for the Wolverines is TJ Hubbard, third season. And that ball is out to the left fielder. And that is out number one as Lorianne Olson flies out to Brianna Moeller.
the shortstop, number six, Shay Smith. All right, and here comes the number two hitter in the lineup today, Shay Smith, the current player of the week in the conference. 417 average. And that's ball one to Shay Smith. She and her twin Sierra, Waddell, Arizona, seniors, leaders, great players, hard workers on Ann Pearson's team. And that is a ball as well, ball two. Really no surprise, they don't want to send anything down the middle, Shea Smith. She went seven for 12 at the plate with a hit in all four games. That's a strike in the GCU Purple Classic. So quite a week for Shea Smith. And a 2-2 count after the strike from Kretz. Battling back in this at bat after getting down 2-0. And that ball is going to be called a strike. And that is the second out of the inning as Kretz gets Smith looking right there. The third baseman, number three, Sierra. The third baseman is Sierra Smith, Shay's twin. And the offering from Kretz is a ball. That's in there, evening the count at 1-1. One, one. Great little note here from Sarah Woodward. 18 sets of twins in NCAA D1 softball and Shea and Sierra as he's gonna lay down the bunt, but it's gonna go foul. They lead all D1 sets of twins in batting average here in 2019, as well as combined hits. They have 74 hits between them. Getting it done here for the Lopes. Ann Pearson will certainly miss them. I asked her how she's going to reload and replace these two. She said she doesn't know quite yet, but she always does seem to get that talent in here. And that ball is high, 2-2 two -two count. Three, two count now after the ball to Smith. Lopes look to get something going here in the bottom of the first. And she smacks that one. It's gonna drop into low. It's gonna be caught in left field. <laughs> gonna be caught by the left fielder for the Wolverines, Brianna Moeller. And that ends the first inning here. We are scoreless and not a base runner yet here. As you are watching Grand Canyon softball on GCU TV. Watched it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. And welcome back, GCU TV on this Friday evening. Lovely weather going on right now. Spring in full force here in Phoenix, Arizona. Ryan Denhart on the mound. Got the first three batters, two pop-ups and a strikeout. Now Brianna Moeller set to lead off the second inning. The left fielder, she recorded two outs uh, in the bottom of the first. Two fly balls to left field. Oh, 
and Moeller takes ball one. Muller batting 304 in 19 games so far this season. Four homers. And the pitch from Denhart, that's fouled into the Lopes dugout. Denhart, once again, the WAC pitcher of the week. Struck, uh, she did a fantastic job. Uh, over this past week as part of the GCU Purple Classic. The 1-1 one -one from Den Hart once again fouled back. The one-two pitch inside for the strikeout. Nice pitch right there. Perfectly placed. Second strikeout of the game for Denhart. And here is the catcher, Beja Query. Batting 348 on the season, 46 at-bats. And that pitch is in there for the strike. And that is up the middle. Did it hit Denhart over to third for the out? What a play. Sierra Smith making that throw, and then the first baseman, Taylor Olson, bringing it down. Looked for a minute like it uh, might have scalded Denhart there, but that's an out. That's going to be the second out of the game, or I should say of the inning. Denhart laughing. That's good to see. hit her in the ankle so if she's hurting she's not showing it because she's smiling but uh, certainly looks like it might have might have stung and there's a meeting in the circle she continues to laugh <laughs> And a little bit of a pause here as uh, the Lopes collect themselves. We're in the top of the second here. Two outs. Denhart doing a nice job so far. She's got two strikeouts and getting the ground ball there, even though it hit her in the ankle. And uh, Sierra Smith was able to make the play and make the throw. The throw was a little high, but Olsen bringing it down over at first base. Berlin Carrion is the designated player from Los Alamitos, California, same as Denhart. So interesting matchup here. And that ball is popped up sky high. And it looks like, oh, it's going to be dropped right there. The sun is tough today, no question. And it looked like the second baseman Savannah Torville was heading over that way but could not get a handle on it. So, Berlin Carrion reaches base, first base runner in the game for Utah Valley. Up next, Lena Rebolito. She's the third baseman for the Wolverines. And the pitch is fouled back near the on-deck circle. <laughs> the 0-1. It's in there. That's fouled back. 
Rebelito is a sophomore from Riverside, California. Two outs carrying on first base for Rebelito. Den Hart gets the swing and the miss, and the third out strands the runner. And nice job getting out of that one with the runner on first base. And we want to remind you here on GCU TV, welcome to the big leagues. The Grand Canyon Beverage Company has just launched a 16-ounce can of their popular energy drink, Stampede. Keep up with the herd and head to GCBC to get yours. So three strikeouts in the game for Denhart as we head to the bottom of the, I should say. <laughs> My scorecard is already a little bit messed up, which is a problem because we are early in this game. And we go to the bottom of the second. Savannah Torville set to lead off for the Lopes. Torville's got some power as we get set here for the bottom of the second. Uh, first freshman to Homer in her GCU debut since Kelsey Barrick in 2012. So keep an eye on Torville, batting 277 in 31 games this season with four homers. And the first pitch from Kratz, second pitch I should say, 1-1 one, one right there, that's a ball. The 1-1 one, one to Torville up high for ball two. And Torville smacks that one to the third baseman who makes the play for the first out of the second inning. Now Taylor Olson steps to the plate. Olson playing first base here today for the Lopes. And that ball is going to drop into right field. Line drive gets Olsen on base. And a one-out base hit for the Lopes here in the second. The designated player, number 27, Lily Bishop. Lily Bishop steps to the plate, the designated player for the Lopes, a transfer from NC State from Riverside, California. And the first pitch is a strike. Devin Kratz pitching for the Wolverines. The 0-1, and a swing and a miss. Down 0-2 for Bishop, who made 42 starts for the Wolfpack. That ball is up for ball one. Inside for ball two, two-two count. 
Now for Taylor Olson. The left fielder, number four, Maddie Dowder. And the strikeout. Left fielder Madeline Dowdle comes to the plate now for the Lopes. And with the good ball going foul, it's in a one count to Dowdle, the left fielder today. High and outside. One one to Dowdle. And that ball is just over the outstretched arm of the second baseman into the outfield. And Olsen's going to stop over there at third base. That's a double for Madeline Dowdle. Nice job there. And now second and third here with two outs. Can the Lopes bring a run across here in the bottom of the second inning? The Wolverines converse. Devin Kretz in a little bit of a jam here. Center fielder Taylor Kay comes to the plate for the Lopes in a big situation. And that ball goes foul. Taylor Kay from Glendale, Arizona, another senior on this team. Kay's got some speed, that's for sure. Right now she's trying to drive in a run. The 0-1 pitch, and she lays down the bunt, and it's fielded by Kretz. Uh, oh, it's going to be a safe call over there at first to mention the speed by Kay. She shows it in the outfield. She shows it as a base runner. We'll see. Uh, as Dowdle is over on third base right now, and... conversation with the umpire over there. The first base umpire here tonight, Bob Garcia. Matthew Jacks behind home plate. Glenda Bates at third base. Getting clarification on that. The catcher, number five. But up comes Kaylee Dietrich as uh, Kay is safe over there at first base. One zero count now to Kaylee Dietrich. And a chopper foul down the third base line. So Olsen on third base. Dowdle on second and Taylor K over at first. And pulling it foul once again. Bases loaded here for Dietrich, two outs. As the Lopes try to get on the board. The pitch from Kretz. And it is popped up, but back foul into the stands.
The one, two to Dietrich. And that is high. Ball two. Again, the offering from Kretz is high. Full count, two out. Bases loaded here in the bottom of the second for the Lopes. <laughs> and Dietrich, once again, that is back foul. Dietrich from Gilbert, Arizona, a sophomore catcher and an infielder, but has taken over behind the plate for the most part. And in a big spot here. The three to pitch, that is going to go foul down the first base side. She is staying alive in this at bat. That pitch high, walks in a run. Kretz issues the walk to Kaylee Dietrich and the Lopes strike first here. Nice at bat by Dietrich right there. The right fielder, number Back to the top of the lineup with right fielder Lorian Olsen trying to tack on a few more runs here. That's going to go back foul, the 0 1. Lopes offense. They have some power in this lineup, but they do like to get those base runners on. They have a lot of speed. And a situation like this, looking for a clutch hit right now from Olsen. The 0 2 from Kretz. And that is outside for ball one. Olsen flied out to left field in her first at bat. Kretz missing high quite a bit. And that is ball two, two, two count now, once again with two outs. And that is. Close, but that's going to be a ball, a little bit low. 3-2 count right now. Bases loaded once again. Kretz certainly trying to avoid another walk here. Swing and a miss. That's balls going to be out number three right there. So bases loaded, and they get one run out of it with the walk that was issued to Kelly Dietrich, but just one run coming in in the bottom of the second. The Lopes take the lead in this game, and that ends the second inning here from Grand Canyon University. Thanks for watching GCU TV. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes!
find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. On the campus of Grand Canyon University at the softball stadium, it is one to nothing. The Lopes leading the Wolverines of Utah Valley. Ryan Danhart out for the top of the third. She's got three strikeouts so far in the game. And leading off this inning for the Wolverines is number 28, Madison Sisko. 5'7", senior, baseman, Las Vegas, Nevada. Go, from Silverado High School and Salt Lake Community College. And interesting inning right there that we just saw from Grand Canyon, a chance to uh, put a couple runs on the board. They got one. And Denhart hoping now to shut this Wolverine lineup down in the top of the third. First pitch in there for a strike. The 0-1 to Cisco, low. That ball's a strike. Well placed inside. Not much Cisco could do with that one. In the series history between these two teams, uh, Grand Canyon 14 and one against Utah Valley. And the only loss coming last year in the first game of the series. That ball again right in there. She's hitting her spots. <laughs> Cisco befuddled uh, as she takes the strike out the fourth of the game for Denhart. Carly Olson comes to the plate, the short stop for the Wolverines. Batting 316 on the season, 11 games. That is right down the middle. That is strike one for Ryan Denhart. That pitch outside, evens the count at one. This is a Utah Valley team that can really hit. 321 is their batting average on the season, best in the WAC. And that ball's just a bit outside, two, two and one the count. To Carly Olson. That ball fouled off. Olsen is a freshman from Corona, California, Santiago High School. And she is slugging 368 on the season. A 458 on base percentage. The 2-2 pitch is up and a full count now. A swing and a miss, and that is the fifth strikeout for Denhart. And the second of this inning. Nice job there by the WAC pitcher of the week, Ryan Denhart. Now they turn the lineup over. Center fielder Skylar Cook comes to the plate. Cook the leadoff hitter for the Wolverines. A senior batting 311. Showing bunt, that's in there for a strike. That just misses outside, one and one. Cook from South Jordan, Utah, Copper Hills High School and College of Southern Idaho. And that 
is going to be a strike. One and two. It's Cooks trying to bunt to get on base. Infield playing in for that exact reason. And that ball is slapped to the second baseman and the out made as Taylor Olson makes the play over at first and a one, two, three inning for Ryan Denhart here at Grand Canyon where the Lopes lead it by the score of one to nothing. From the Center of Worship Arts comes Canyon Worship 2018, a collection of songs written, recorded, and performed by GCU's Worship Arts students. Available now on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. So we head to the bottom of the third inning here at Grand Canyon. And we talked a little bit about the great facilities here. This is a beautiful softball stadium much like the baseball stadium, fully complete now. And a nice little crowd here on a Friday night. For Utah Valley and the Wolverines, the WAC opener for Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon at 18 and 13 on the season, and they've had some terrific non-conference competition. They got a win over Florida State and the Seminoles played Oklahoma close. And of course the Seminoles, the reigning national champs, so that was a big one, no question about that. They loved the challenge of that competition. Shea Smith will lead it off here for the Lopes in the bottom of the third. And she's gonna lay down the bunt, the catcher over to first base and she is out over there, nice play by the Wolverines catcher, Beja Query, for the first out of the game, or the inning. <laughs> Bear with me, everyone. <laughs> I'm having fun. I hope you're enjoying the broadcast here on GCU TV as I make my way through. And now Sierra Smith takes ball one, one out here in the third. Again on the second base side of the infield and she is called out at first base as far as Shea Smith. Did get the out as first baseman Madison Sisko held on there for long enough to record the out. So two outs here in the third. And Savannah Torville comes up now, the second baseman with two outs and that's the uh, inside strike for strike one. Up and in, I believe it did hit her. She's going first, Savannah Torval, the freshman, hit by a pitch by Kretz. And Taylor Olson comes to the plate. Olson hits that one high to center and the out recorded for out number three. Center fielder for the Wolverines makes the catch, Skylar Cook. Lopes lead it one to nothing. We've completed three innings here at Grand Canyon University. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. And as an RN, you delight in sharing it. But there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. 
Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere. So you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. And welcome back. We go to the top of the fourth here from Grand Canyon. Ryan Denhart doing a nice job on the mound. The Wolverines have yet to put a run across. Leading off this inning, Abby Doty for the Wolverines, the right fielder. She struck out back in the first inning. Denhart with five strikeouts so far. And that one is tapped over to the third base side. That is a foul ball. Sarah Smith making the play anyway, but that one, uh, Dowdy will get another try on. The 0 1 pitch. Mm, thought it might have caught the outside corner, but that goes for ball one. One and one. To Dowdy, the right fielder. Utah Valley 7 and 10 on the season. TJ Hubbard, their head coach in his third season. Denhart gets the swing and the miss. Beautiful pitch right there. Dowdy here now, Lindsey Steverson, the second baseman and their leading hitter in the on deck circle. The one two from Denhart is on the way. Inside, ball two. And that pitch over to the shortstop, Shea Smith, for the easy out. First out of the fourth. Second baseman, Lindsay Steverson. Lindsay Steverson up now, and we mentioned second in the conference in average, batting average. She leads the team in homers with five. She's from Mesa, Arizona. Ball low and outside for ball one. Red Mountain High School, Steverson hails from. And the 0-1 from Denhart. Inside, ball two. That pitch is put in play high, and that is gonna, going to go almost to the wall, but it is caught by the left fielder, Madeline Dowdle. You can see the power Steverson has. That one is kept in the yard, and a very loud out number two. Left fielder, Brianna Moeller. Brianna Moeller at the dish now. The left fielder struck out in the second inning. And that ball is popped up to the infielder. Torville, that is out number three. And the Lopes and Ryan Denhart keep the Wolverines off the board once again as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning here from Grand Canyon University. 
If you're visiting campus this spring, why not stay at the GCU Hotel, featuring comfortable rooms, a resort-style pool, and the Canyon 49 Grill. It's the perfect place to stay when coming to GCU. Book a room today at gcuhotel.com. And there are a lot of people staying in a lot of different hotels in the Valley right about now with spring training going on. Lots of, uh, lots of tourists from much colder places coming in to see their teams. Even going back to February, a lot of teams coming out here for tournaments uh, as far as collegiate baseball and softball. And of course we had some dicey weather in a few of those days, but it's certainly gotten pretty nice now. We're reaching 80 on most days currently here in the valley. Climbed Camelback Mountain the other day and there were a lot of tourists, a lot of people who had sunburns <laughs> and a very crowded Camelback Mountain. Devin Kretz with her warm up pitches here. The junior from Corona, California has just given up the one run here today and it was uh, a walk that was issued to Kaylee Dietrich that brought that run in. Off, she got out of the jam the by getting Lorianne Olsen to fly out. Lily, Lily Bishop will lead things off, the designated player here for the Lopes. And that one hard hit to the second baseman, that's gonna get through. Bishop with a base hit to lead off the fourth. We mentioned earlier Bishop, a transfer from NC State. And Pearson is out on the field. Kate Acton is in to pinch run. Number 29 from Buckeye, Arizona. Pinch running at first base for GCU, number 29, Kate Acton. So Acton at first and Maddie Dowdle, who's the left fielder today from Tucson, Arizona. She's a senior. And Acton, she is going to get over to second base, the steal. And now a runner in scoring position for Dowdle, who doubled earlier in the game. So after the steal, the 1 0 pitch from Kretz. And that is ball two. And Dowdle swings and misses there, two and one count. That offering is low for ball three. The three one pitch. And that ball is popped up into the infield and can she make the play as yes, the second baseman for the Wolverines does just that, Lindsay Steverson for the first out. Stepping to the plate now is the center fielder, the center Taylor, Taylor Kay. Number 20, Taylor Kay. Kay singled back in the second. And that ball over to the third baseman for the out. It does move the runner, Acton, though, to third base. So Kay doing her job there. With two outs now, Kate Acton on third. And stepping to the plate is catcher, catcher Kaylee Dietrich. Kaylee Dietrich. She walked back in the second, which brought home the one run that the Lopes have scored. 
And the pitch, low and inside. Outside ball two. Mound meeting here, or I should say circle. <laughs> the pitcher circle, Devin Kretz. All right, Kretz set here to deliver the pitch, 2-0 count to Dietrich. That's in there for a strike. Mm, that ball is fouled off. Two and two here with two outs and the runner on third. Kelly Dietrich pulls that one, but foul to the third base side. Two two is low, full count. Dietrich batting 172 on the season. 10 hits. And that is going to be another walk. Dietrich with some nice patience at the plate. Another walk. So two on here for Lorian Olsen. as the Lopes extend this inning and try to get another run across. Pitch runner at first base for GCU, number 14, Rachel Hammonds. Rachel Hammonds will be the pinch runner for Kaylee Dietrich over there. The right fielder, number 20. So Lorian Olsen. Comes up in another big spot here, two outs, and a chance to drive in a run. Olsen batting 216 on the season. And that one is going to be high in the air, but foul and not quite playable for the left fielder, Brianna Moeller. Olsen has nine starts this season. The 0-1 pitch from Kretz. Outside, ball one. I mentioned just nine starts for Olsen. She had a sprained ankle, so back and getting into the swing of things and leading off today for the Lopes. The 1-1 one, one from Kretz, and it's back up the middle. Kretz makes the play and gets out of the jam. And that ends the fourth inning. Lopes still leading it here, one to nothing in the WAC opener with Utah Valley. 
visiting here today. And that is the end of the fourth here on GCU TV. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant. In-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. Back at GCU, Ryan Denhart on the mound for the Lopes. Pitching a shutout right here as we go to the top of the fifth inning. She's kept some of the big bats off the board. Brianna Moeller will lead it off. I'll check that. The hitter is Beja Query. Beja Query, the catcher from Henderson, Nevada. She is a junior. And she grounded out to third base back in the second inning. And outside, ball two. <laughs> two a pitch ripped to the third base side, but foul. And the Wolverines uh, return seven starters this year. The 2-1 pitch to Query, and that one is fouled to the first base side. Query batting 348 on the season in the cleanup spot. She's played in 16 games, 14 starts. And that one, again, foul. So 2-2 two -two here for Query. Ryan Denhart, the reigning WAC pitcher of the week. The 2-2 two -two pitch, and that one is going to be playable to right field, and making the catch is Lorian Olson. Denhart getting another tough hitter for the Wolverines out to lead off an inning. And now the designated player, Berlin Carrion. Outside, ball one. Carrion from Los Alamitos, California, a freshman. And that's in there, strike one, and a 1-1 one -one count now for Denhart. And Carrion hits that one back to Denhart, who makes the easy play for out number two. Denhart had to shake off a ball that hit her ankle earlier in this game. It does not seem to have affected her. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. 
Lena Rebolito comes to the plate now. She struck out in the second inning. And the bunt goes back behind the catcher and foul. Rebolito batting 327 on the season. 17 games, all starts for the Wolverines. And the 0-1 from Denhart, low and inside for ball one. The 1-1 one, one high for ball two. Ann Pearson loves her starting pitching depth. She's got four starters that can really log a lot of innings. And they've been doing that, doing a nice job. Dan Hart, as I mentioned, player of the week, pitcher of the week in the WAC. And the 2-1 fouled off. Evens the count at 2-2 now as the Lopes have a 1-0 lead here in the top of the fifth. The 2-2 pitch out to right, and Lorianne Olsen makes the play for the third out. Another 1-2-3 inning for Denhart as we complete four and a half here from GCU. Catch the latest series from GCU TV, Living as Lopes, Finding Your Purpose. Living as Lopes follows a group of GCU students as they navigate their way through college life and all that it holds with a few fun twists along the way. Watch new episodes every week on youtube.com slash GCU. Sounds like a cool series. Check it out. I ought to be in college again. <laughs> Ryan Denhart, all smiles there, talking to the catcher, Kaylee Dietrich. The transfer from Maryland has done a very nice job on the mound for the Lopes all season, and continuing that here tonight in the WAC opener against the Wolverines, there's Devin Kretz. As she gets set to face the heart of the lineup for the Lopes, Shea Smith will lead things off here in the bottom of the fifth. Smith, Smith, and Torville. Leading off for GCU, shortstop, Shea Smith. Smith struck out and grounded out in her first two at-bats. That one goes foul. And the ball evens the count at 1-1. One, one. Kretz is a junior from Corona, California, a transfer from UTEP on the mound here for the Wolverines. And that ball is put in play to the shortstop and the out recorded as Smith can't quite beat that one out. Wolverines get out number one here in the fifth. The third baseman. Third baseman Sierra Smith comes to the plate. She and her sister have played. She and her twin sister have played together their entire lives. And that doesn't change here at Grand Canyon. Seniors, they're going to be missed for sure. Enjoying every moment of the senior season. And right now, a one to nothing lead here in the fifth. The 1 0 pitch, and that's outside, 2 0.
Kretz misses high, 3-0 to Smith. That's in there for a strike. 3-1 now. Smith fouls that one back. 3-2 count. That ball is lined down the first baseline all the way to the wall. She is going to get a triple out of this one as she is safe at third base, Sierra Smith. And last year, she ranked 20th and 24th in the country in hits and triples, respectively. So she had five triples in her junior season and gets one here in 2019. The second baseman, number So one out, Savannah Sierra Smith on third base for Savannah Torville. That ball's ripped foul. Torville's an exciting player to come over as a freshman. And the 0-1 from Kretz. And this is inside ball one. The 1-1 pitch, again hit hard but foul. She hit by that one? I believe so. So Savannah Torville hit by the pitch, and the freshman reaches base for the second time. She was also hit back in the third inning. The first baseman, and Taylor Olson steps to the plate, the first baseman. Singled in the first and flied out in the third inning. Olsen came around to score in that second inning, pardon me. And uh, that's the only run of the game currently for the Lopes, but two on with one out here for Olsen. And that ball is high in the sky out to center. And the play is made, but coming home and crossing the plate. For the Lopes. And that's a two to nothing lead right now for Grand Canyon. The designated player, number 20. Sierra Smith scores the run, and Bishop. that adds another one here in what has been a close game. Lily Bishop now steps to the plate. That one back foul over the Wolverines dugout. So Taylor Olson drives in a run with the sacrifice fly. Willie Bishop singled in the fourth, and that one right to the first baseman, but bobbled. But the first baseman, Madison Cisco, does step on the bag for the out. But the Lopes put another run on the board, two to nothing over the Utah Valley Wolverines as we head to the sixth inning. More coming your way on GCU TV in moments. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. 
We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. The Lopes lead it two to nothing as we head to the top of the sixth. Madison Cisco, the first baseman, was set to lead off. It is actually going to be number five, Abby Tuttle. Number five, Abby Tuttle, leads off the sixth for the Wolverines. And that's ball one from Ryan Denhart. Tuttle the senior coming off the bench in this one. And that ball slapped foul, one and one. Tuttle from Pace in Utah. She is a senior Salem Hills High School, Dawson Community College. The 1-1 one, one from Denhart. And outside, just trying to catch the corner there. Couldn't quite get the call. 2-1. and one. Tuttle steps in. And back to Denhart. <laughs> Liner up the middle, but Denhart makes the play. It's been done a nice job fielding out there today. Carly Olson. Carly Olson now to the plate, the shortstop for the Wolverines. She was a strikeout victim in the third inning, swinging, trying to get something going as the Wolverines have yet to score in this one. That is back foul. Olsen, a freshman, one of three in the starting lineup today for the Wolverines, joining Berlin Carrion and Abby Doty. The 0-1 pitch fouled back. 0-2 now on Carly Olsen. Adding 316 on the season, nine starts at shortstop. Denhart misses high, one and two. Denhart transferred from Maryland. She had 93 strikeouts in 2018, coming in 181 innings. She led her high school to the championship back in 2017. An accomplished power arm as that ball is foul. Count stays one and two. Outside ball two, two and two. She joins a pitching staff that includes a couple of very solid starters in Brianna Aguilar, Yessie Morrison. The two-two pitch. 
And again, fouled back by Carly Olson. Lopes lead it here in the sixth inning, two to nothing. Two two pitch fouled into the Wolverine dugout. Olsen staying alive here in this at bat. One out, trying to get some offense against this Lopes team led in the circle by Denhart. Missing up. Full count now. The three, two. And that is a called strike three. Denhardt has had a few of those here today. That is her sixth strikeout of the game. And now two outs in the sixth. Denhardt Den struck out 14 on February 23rd against North Dakota. So you can see by a performance like that what she can do, a power arm for the Lopes. For Ann Pearson in her 16th season, the only coach in the program's history. Great success over the years for Ann and the Lopes. Jordan Frias in the game now and at the plate. Swings and misses. 1-1 one, one the count. Jordan in for Skylar Cook. The leadoff hitter. And Frias puts it in play here to Torville who gets the out at first. And a 1-2-3 inning for Denhart. She has been outstanding here tonight, and that continues here in the sixth. Lopes lead it two to nothing here on GCU TV. It's time for the upcoming schedule, and we want to bring you a couple of messages here. And one of them is uh, the upcoming schedule brought to you by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Grand Canyon taking on California Baptist, March 22nd, March 23rd, March 24th, and there are the times. So another uh, baseball matchup to watch for here as uh, Andy Stankiewicz and Lopes baseball team, they're having a, another great season. A lot of talent on that team. Got to see them against Wichita State to open the season. Ryan Denhart conferring with pitching coach Mandy Gardner. And all good right now as Denhardt has yet to give up a run. Devin Krutz back out for the sixth. Leading off for GCU, left fielder, Maddie Dowdle. Maddie Dowdle leads off the sixth inning for the Lopes. She's playing left field here tonight. Dowdle doubled back in the second inning and popped out in the fourth. And that's strike one. And 
And that one is hit hard into left field, base hit, Madeline Dowdle, and it's kicked around out in the outfield. She's gonna get over to second, and she's in there. Nice base running by Dowdle. Brianna Moeller couldn't quite get the handle on that ball out in left field. And so uh, with no outs here in the bottom of the sixth, Dowdle gets the Lopes, uh, a base runner here, in scoring position for Taylor Kay, the center fielder. Kay shows bunt, that's a strike. And Kay lines that one, kind of a check swing, but it's lined out to the third baseman, Lena Rebolito, for out number one. Number Dowdle five. stays put at second. The catcher, the catcher, Kaylee Dietrich, has walked twice in this game. She's come up in some big situations with runners on base, and this happens again here in the bottom of the sixth. Fouled off for strike one. Oh Dietrich hits it up the middle, and the shortstop can't quite collect that one. Carly Olson. Can't get the throw off, and so Carly, Kaylee Dietrich <laughs> reaches base. Dietrich's been on base three times now in the game. Gianna Nicoletti comes in as the pinch runner for Dietrich. Gianna Nicoletti, a freshman from Fullerton, California. Number 21, Lorian Olsen. Lorian Olsen. at the plate, takes ball one. Olsen 0 for three on the day. He's made some nice plays out in right field. That one is fouled back. Two on, one out. Bottom of the six, Lopes lead it two nothing. In the air, but foul. And Devin Kratz has pitched well for the Wolverines. He's got a record of five and five. She's pitched well here tonight, but is down two to nothing. Ryan Denhart has been able to keep the Wolverines off the board. That ball high and outside, 2-2 two, two the count. Nice. Olsen takes that, strike three. That was a kind of borderline pitch. Matthew Jacks calls Olsen out on strikes. Two down here in the bottom of the sixth for the Lopes. 
Shea Smith at the plate. 0 for 3 today. WAC Player of the Week, 7 for 12 this week. And that is strike one as she swings and misses. That one is fouled back as Shea Smith comes into the game batting 417 on the season, her senior season. 31 games, all starts. Three home runs and 17 runs batted in. She and Savannah Torville lead the team in that category with 17 RBIs. 0 oh 2 to Smith, and that one is fouled off. Smith sisters, twins from Waddell, Arizona, Verado High School. Shea, the shortstop. Sierra, the third baseman. And the 0-2, and that is outside ball one. One two pitch, and that is going to land in the infield. All right, Smith again hitting it to the left side. Fouled off, one and two, the count remains. Dowdle on second, and Kaylee Dietrich uh, did get the single. Gianna Nicoletti is running for her at, over at first base as the Lopes look to tack on another run. Shea Smith, their leading hitter, hits this one to the shortstop and records the out. Nice job by Devin Kretz getting that third out. And Kretz is through six. She's given up just two, but Ryan Denhart has not given up a run. She's looking for her sixth win of the season. As we're through six here on GCU TV. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together, but you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education. And you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back here at GCU, the Lopes leading by the score of two to nothing. Lopes up here in the WAC opener against the Wolverines. Ryan Denhart pitching a gem from Los Alamitos High School, then went to Maryland. 93 strikeouts as a freshman at Maryland and now here at Grand Canyon. And she is Set to face Abby Dowdy, who leads off the seventh here. Dowdy struck out in the first and lined out to the shortstop in the fourth inning. And that's in there for a strike.
The 0-2 to Dowdy is high. The one-two pitch to Dowdy. And that is sent back foul. Denhart yet to give up a hit. The only player that reached base was Berlin Carrion. That was on an error. The one-two pitch and over to the first base side. Can they make the play? Uh, not quite. Unbelievably, as I mentioned, the fact that she had not given up a hit right there and player reaches base. So that's Abby Dowdy hitting it over to Taylor Olson and reaching. And that's going to be recorded as a hit. And Lindsay Steverson hits that one into the outfield for the second hit of the game. Denhart, who has been nearly perfect in this game, Gives up two hits to start the seventh inning here. Two nothing Lopes lead. Here in the top of the seventh and a conference with pitching coach Mandy Gardner. trying to close this one out. Two base runners now and no outs here in the seventh. And Lindsay Steverson batting 418 on the season, one of the most dangerous hitters. She would not be denied. She was over two coming into that last appearance, which ended in the base hit. Brianna Moeller steps to the plate, the left fielder. And that one is hit to left, but foul. Moeller batting 305 on the season, the senior. And the 01 pitch is fouled off to the left side near the Lopes dugout. Denhart delivers with an 0-2 count. And that one is hit out to left. And the catch is made by Madeline Dowdle out in left field, so the runners stay put. Out number one for Ryan Denhart. Looking to close out the win here in the WAC opener against the Utah Valley Wolverines. Beja Query steps to the plate, the catcher today for Utah Valley. That ball hit high, popped up, and the catch is made for out number two in the inning. Shea Smith making the play.
the designated player, number 11, Berlin Carrion. Berlin Carrion steps to the plate. She had been the only base runner to reach in this game before here in the seventh on the error in the second inning. And that's in there for strike one to Carrion. It wasn't really by design that I had not mentioned the no hitter that Denhart was taking into the seventh. <laughs> I actually hadn't checked to see if the Carrion hit was an error or a hit, but it was an error in fact. And so it's an error on the second baseman, Torville. So no hitter through six for Denhart, who now is in a bit of trouble, but got the two outs and now trying to retire Carrion for the victory. The 1-1 one, one is just high and outside. 2-1 to Carrion. Designated player tonight for the Wolverines. Series history between these two teams. The Lopes are 14-1 against Utah Valley. The only loss last year. Looking to make it 15-1. That is in there. Beautiful pitch. Off-speed stuff from Denhart, who's been masterful here tonight. Two strikes, two outs. The ball is in play and off the glove of Denhart, but the play is made by Torville. And they get the out, they get the win. Ryan Denhart, who had a no-hitter through six innings, did give up two hits to start the seventh, but then three outs to get the win here today. The Lopes run their record to 19 and 13 on the season and win the WAC opener against Utah Valley. Denhart moves to six and three on the season. as the Lopes are victorious here on this beautiful Friday night. They get the win over Utah Valley, but more to come as this is a double header here tonight. The next game slated to start at 7 p.m. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll be right back for our second game of the evening. I'm Jody Jackson, I've had a lot of fun. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, calling softball is new to me and uh, really enjoyed the game though. Absolutely beautiful performance by Ryan Denhart here tonight and some, some timely hitting and strong at bats from the Lopes. First pitch is seven o'clock coming up for the second game. So be sure to follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. Have a great night. We'll see you at 7 and go Lopes.